This is Jeff Weiss um, with Unit 10 Lecture on Biological Enemies of Plants and Their Control. Um, this will be a, a, a relatively short lecture because I've uh, asked Professor McCarthy from the Biology Department to give a lecture of on integrated pest management, which um, I ask you to uh, uh, take in. Um, so the little character in the middle of this first slide is the emerald ash borer and he and his relatives are um, demolishing all of the ash trees across the Midwest and moving outward. Um, it's a terrible uh, pest that's been uh, imported from Asia and the uh, plant on the right is uh, also from Asia. It's called kudzu uh, it's known as the plant that ate the south. Uh, it's an invasive plant that is totally covering uh, homes, abandoned homes, and uh, vegetation across the southeastern U.S. It's also been uh, found in Illinois and seems to be moving its way northward uh, as uh, climate change uh, approaches. But these are just two examples of uh, some of the pests that are uh, um, being brought in as uh, plants and animals and things are moving uh, around the world through our uh, mass culture. So um, control of these uh, and other pests are a critical concern for uh, horticulturalists. Upon completion of this unit, you should be able to discuss uh, 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 the life cycle and effects of at least one uh, disease or pest that affect uh, horticultural plants. Um, at least for the discussion question, I've asked you to uh, consider alternative approaches to using uh, chemicals. And in order to do so, you need to understand the um, uh, life cycle uh, or how um, uh, one of these critters affects uh, a plant. And then um, you also um, should know um, a little bit about the principles and practices of integrated pest management, IPM. So here's some of the key terms and concepts. Um, we're we're going to be looking at animal pests, uh, plant diseases, and horticultural weeds are the main categories of, uh, of organisms that um, need to be controlled in order to produce uh, healthy uh, and uh, productive plants. So um, protecting horticultural plants, the practices vary uh, substantially, whether we're uh, talking about greenhouse culture or nurseries and field crops. Uh, in greenhouses, uh, generally there's fewer weed problems, um, but uh, algae, uh, insects, and mites, uh, bacteria, and viruses, and fungi can uh, take advantage of the controlled conditions and the concentration of uh, one or a small number of plants to uh, um, uh, reproduce explosively and cause problems that um, can wipe out the production of a greenhouse. On the other hand, in nursery and field crops, uh, weeds uh, take center stage as being uh, uh, one of the big problems. Uh, and then uh, things that hide out in soil, um, nematodes, slugs, uh, uh, fungi, bacteria, uh, and then the uh, herbivores, uh, mammals, birds, um, and other insects, other critters, uh, uh, can also have uh, devastating effects on, uh, on our crop plants. So um, this pyramid is one published by the Department of Agriculture, and it puts biological control at the base of the pyramid. Uh, and as you move up the pyramid, uh, uh, costs increase and the v environmental impacts increase and also um, decreasing um, sustainability and species diversity occurs. So pesticides are at the top of the pyramid uh, as being the most intensive and pot potentially damaging uh, uh, methods uh, with other tools in the middle and then biological control at the bottom. And in this sense, uh, biological control is encouraging the uh, natural enemies uh, that are already present, uh, introducing uh, new um, 
organisms to conduct biological control uh, can be right up there with the use of pesticides in terms of causing uh, potential uh, uh, problems. Um, and the other principles of uh, integrated pest management including include exclusion, eradic eradication, protection, and resistance. Uh, total exclusion of animal pests is almost uh, are of, of, uh, of pests is almost impossible uh, unless they're caught at a very early stage. So um, a lot of emphasis is put on practices such as uh, uh, um, physical and cultural, that is just uh, keeping your plants uh, uh, clean, uh, practicing good hygiene, um, uh, selecting uh, a, a site and encouraging the natural uh, um, qualities of soil and your landscape to uh, reduce the um, uh, the pest problems uh, but then there's also uh, 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 chemical biological controls and um, frequent use of uh, legislation to try to um, avoid the uh, introduction or spread of uh, uh, of pests into new areas We'll get into these, and uh, Professor McCarthy gets into these in a lot more detail. So with respect to invasive plants, uh, weeds are a big problem. Um, estimated $138 billion in annual damage and cost to combat them in the U.S., and these include uh, agricultural weeds, uh, invasive plants, and uh, uh, com competitors in forests and natural areas, and uh, uh, lawn and garden pests. The biggest uh, uh, tool, or the biggest chemical tool in the arsenal is uh, a chemical called glyphosate. Uh, the trade name it operates under a lot of trade names, but especially Roundup. And uh, uh, over 200 million pounds of this stuff uh, gets applied to fields and forests every year. Uh, it is a systemic herbicide. Uh, it's broad spectrum, non-selective, and most studies indicate it has uh, low toxic toxicity to uh, humans and other organisms. However, uh, it, it does have some uh, effects. Uh, it can be poisonous to uh, uh, aquatic life, and uh, uh, it, because of its widespread use now over many years, uh, some weeds are developing uh, resistance to uh, to this chemical and are um, uh, requiring uh, larger and larger uh, applications and uh, uh, are, are becoming non-reactive. Uh, additionally, um, use of Roundup has been encouraged by development of genetically modified crops that are Roundup ready. Uh, they use a uh, a gene that's been spliced and, and added um, to a bacterium and that and that gene has been added to uh, corn and soybeans uh, to make them resistance, resistant to Roundup uh, so that a farmer can um, uh, basically plant these uh, these crops and then uh, dump uh, Roundup on there to kill everything else in the field uh, and that um, has led to um, significant increases in the amount of Roundup uh, being uh, being applied. So some of the diseases um, that affect uh, our plants are uh, fungi. Um, damping off uh, is a problem for uh, 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 seedlings. Uh, powdery mildew uh, is a big problem, especially uh, uh, for uh, some of our plants that uh, some of our uh, ornamental plants especially if they don't have adequate uh, ventilation in summer uh, bacteria uh, don't cause that many diseases but they are very difficult to control so uh, blights uh, such as the blights that affect our uh, our tomato and potato plants are examples of uh, bacteria diseases and then viruses uh, go right inside the host cells of plants and they cause uh, many diseases that are not fatal but are uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, difficult to control and uh, affect the appearance and the quality of uh, of vegetables and uh, uh, ornamental plants. So again, um, Professor McCarthy was kind enough to record a lecture. Uh, it focuses on integrated pest management for gardeners and I urge you to uh, um, listen to it and include uh, uh, part of uh, what you learn in your discussion question for this week. Uh, so that's it for uh, Unit 10 and um, we'll get back to you next week.